Hello everybody, I'm Jim Pierce, and I'm here to talk to you today about uh, making chop. Um, I've been with Mikabu for almost 10 years now, and primarily doing foster work. Um, I've done a little pickup and delivery of cages and different various foster birds as well. And uh, I really enjoy being a part of it. It's been an important part of my life the last 10 years. Uh, I, uh, uh, the chop that I made, uh, my recipe began with what was known as Mike's Mana Mash. And uh, that can still be found online if you want to search it. And it's a very basic recipe. Uh, the recipe I have now um, has gotten huge compared to that. And uh, for some reason, I can't go small. It's got to be huge, monstrous amounts or I'm not happy. And uh, uh, many different various recipes can be found. There's uh, some that are just all herbs, some that are more grain and vegetable and whatnot. I tend to go ahead with the vegetables. Uh, in mind and add to it afterwards and uh, there are many different products you can add to it and the birds love them and it's also part of their natural food cycle for most birds they eat sprouts and buds and so on like that normally and uh, uh, it's good for them that's the same thing with the uh, mash itself or the chop itself is that we use it to get more natural for the food products that they eat my first thing I do when I make mine is I go to the store here locally. I'm in Burlingame, so I'm fortunate enough to have a pet club here that actually carries the Volkman brand Soak and Simmer, and, uh, which is the beans and grains that I like to use. And being as I can't get to the bulk sections now at Whole Foods, uh, this is really handy to use. It's kind of like cheating, but it's worth it. Uh, it's got most of what I like to put in there as far as the grains and the beans go. And uh, all you got to do is soak it overnight, cook it, for, boil it for about 40 minutes the next day, drain it, and uh, it's ready to go. Uh, it's pretty simple that way. Um, my chop recipe itself is uh, very forgiving. Uh, different areas are going to have different products. Um, I'm real fortunate to be able to have most of what I want year round here. Uh, sometimes it isn't the case. Uh, it's very important to have dark leafy greens um, involved in there. Uh, sweet potatoes or garnet yams, depending on what your area calls them, um, are also very important to have. And uh, uh, usually what I do is I'll go in there and I'll see what we have at the store going on. Uh, the first things I always try to find and try to get, and I even shop at different stores and if I can't find them, is uh, dandelion greens. Uh, they're actually quite a good superfood. And uh, dandelion greens, then I go for the mustard greens, uh, kale after that, and there's always different types of it. Um, with this particular batch, I use one bundle of green dandelion greens, one bundle of the red dandelion greens. Uh, that's how they sell them in bundles like that. Um, then one bundle each of the uh, chard, had a rainbow chard, uh, kale in there. And uh, I wasn't able to, they didn't have it in the uh, bundles, but I got one bag, uh, which is the same as a bundle in, in quantity of the mustard grains. And uh, they didn't actually have the fresh ones this time, unfortunately. Um, I'll get one head, small head of purple cabbage and a replacement for the purple cabbage can be bok choy. Uh, bok choy just happens to be really wet and uh, try to keep it as dry as I can on here. Uh, that way there, my dryer doesn't have to do as much work. Um, I'll get three to four large sweet potatoes, garnet ants in there again, and uh, uh, it's part of the collection on there. Uh, I'll get four bags usually of the, they're, they're small bags, uh, probably half pound I think, of the uh, mixed vegetables in the frozen food aisle. And it's got peas, carrots, corn, green beans in it. And uh, the organic of course, everything I use is organic. And uh, with that, um, everything I get uh, goes through my food processor, uh, except for the uh, soak and simmer. Uh, the beans and whatnot, don't they stay normal size and they're fine on my birds eat them. Different birds uh, eat different sizes. Uh, when they come in, some people are going to want to chop large pieces uh, for their parrots because they're going to be more, they're going to eat that more likely. You got to play with it. Myself, my birds, they like it smaller. And to where when the product is done, it looks like this on here. You can see most of it in there. And uh, I also, with this one, I threw in a couple of uh, a couple of heads of uh, broccoli 
and do the same thing with them. It goes through the food processor. Um, I don't bring it down to super teeny tiny small, and you kind of got to play with it. You don't just turn it on and walk away. Uh, so you get a feel for it after a while. And uh, like I said, I, it, it, I've, I've wasted a lot of food trying to figure out what size to eat. And uh, that's but it's been well worth it because they really love my mash <laughs> on here. Um, with uh, making the mash myself, there's, you know, any large bowl works just fine when you want to mix it all up and get it going that way. Uh, myself, personally, I clean and disinfect uh, my kitchen sink. And uh, then I just cover up the bottom of the sink so that, you know, the drain's not there anymore. And that's my big stainless steel bowl. And it uh, works real well for me. you got plenty of room to be able to get your hands in there all the way around. You get a good mix going, and it speeds up the process. Uh, the way I do it and what I got going on, it is a day event and uh, for me. Um, the people that are into making smaller quantities and using a smaller recipe, uh, there's folks out there that do it every morning. And they chop it up or they do it, they make it weekly for their birds. Uh, you find your fit with that. Um, there are recipes sized for that out there. And uh, we'll try to find some of those to post up here for us too. And uh, to see on that. Um, with the sprouting, uh, again, the sprouts come up. I set it up. I learned to time it out just fine. When I thaw out a, a, a bag of the sprouts or the bag of the, the mash and I get them together and I mix them all up. And that's, that's a full thing. And that's probably about eight days of food for my parents each time. And uh, I'm fortunate in the area I live in uh, that I can put it out for the whole day. I don't have to pay close attention to it. Um, I've got a very, very moderate temperature in here, usually around the 70s on the high end. Um, and uh, uh, very low humidity. So I don't have to worry about the food going bad. And uh, it never has. Uh, for me here, and uh, so I don't have a problem leaving it out. Folks like to do it feed in the morning and nighttime. That works just fine too. Um, I do use pellets as well with their food, and I go with a 70-30 mix on there typically, and 30% uh, of the pellets, 70% of the fresh food. Um, when I get the mix right on the, the the chop, they don't eat very many pellets, and uh, they're they're almost a secondary thing. And it's always kind of odd because they'll, they'll go a couple of days without eating any of them and think, wow. And then the next day, that's all they eat. So they, they know what they need. The only thing in this whole batch that I have that is cooked is the uh, soak and simmer. Um, everything else is raw that I have in here. All the rest of the recipe in its entirety is raw. And uh, some other foods that I like to add to it periodically is I'll go with bell peppers. I'll use the stick with the red and orange bell peppers and chop them up and put them in here. Again, they're really wet, and uh, so you want to be careful with how much you use or you get too wet, and it's hard to store. And uh, what I also do at the end, when I get done with everything, putting it together, is I'll usually use the Bob's Red Mill uh, rolled oats and the large oats, and uh, just one of their bags, I believe it's a one-pound bag, and I'll add it into the mix, and uh, everything as I mix it all up, what it does is it helps absorb all the extra moisture and uh, well, a bunch of the extra moisture. And uh, it doesn't let it be so wet. And, and it also, you know, whatever liquid there is in there, the nutrients from that go into the oats and they get to help Rob, on, Rob pick up piggyback on that. Uh, once it's all mixed up uh, and I get it all together and I'm ready to go with it. And what I use is a food saver and uh, uh, to store these in. This particular time, I went out and I bought the wrong size bags and the one gallons, I usually use pork size bags, uh, but these work fine too. I just have to cut them down to get them in there a little bit. Uh, they're one, it's a wonderful little device. Uh, I've never had any problem with uh, coming out bad out of the freezer and uh, for anything that I've used them for so far. The only problem is that because there is moisture in there, when the suction's going on, sometimes it takes a couple of tries to get it to seal. And, uh, but it, it, it's worth the wait for it. And because uh, they never get frostbite, they don't get freezer burn. And uh, it works really well. I'm really grateful for it. And the quantities I can put in each one is just perfect for what I want for each time period. The main bullet points here for us, the things that I want you to take away with you is when you're making your chop, uh, stick with what you got locally. Um, it's okay. It's very forgiving. Go with dark leafy greens on there. 
get you sweet potatoes or anything orange colored like that. Uh, uh, acorn squash or squashes are good also. Butternut squash is very good for that. And uh, also carrots are good for that. Uh, just that the sweet potatoes, the garnet yams have a lot more. And uh, I prefer using those. And I go raw with everything and I keep it raw instead of cooking it. And because uh, I think cooking it takes away from it on there also. Um, it will stay fresh in the refrigerator for about seven, eight days after you thaw it out. I've had absolutely no problems with it. I've been using the same Rubbermaid container for about 10 years now, oh, excuse me, 14 years now, making this uh, mash and using it. And uh, I've never had a batch go bad on me yet. And, uh, but I don't want to try any longer in eight days. <laughs> it's at the max on there. And uh, with that wrapping it up, I'd like to say thank you for listening and uh, go Mikabu.